Hello, welcome to introduction to business series of lectures. My name is Nadezhda Kim and today I will discuss the topic of organizational structure. And the following lecture will be focused on organizational structure. So let us start. So first of all, I'll describe what is the organizational structure, its purpose, and also how organizational structures vary among firms. Also, I'll describe what is the difference between centralized and decentralized organizational structures. And finally, I will describe the four types of organizational structures. So let us start. So each firm should have a strategic plan which determines the future direction of the business. And to achieve the strategic plan, responsibilities of managers should be organized in a way to indicate how all the job responsibilities fit together. So the organizational structure affects the efficiency with which the firm produces a product or service and therefore affects the value of the firm. So by definition, the organizational structure identifies the responsibilities for each job position and also the relationships among those job positions. So in general, so in general a firm wants to establish organizational structure that ensures that each employee is properly guided and monitored by someone above them to do their jobs efficiently. And this will enable a firm to produce its product or service at a relatively low cost. So a firm's organizational structure can be illustrated by organizational charts, which shows the interactions among different job positions. So this chart indicates the chain of comments which identifies job positions to which each employee must report. The chain of comment also illustrates who is responsible for various tasks. So for example, in the following chart, the sales personnel and sales manager report directly to the head of the marketing department. And then head of the marketing, production, finance and research department report directly to the chief executive officer of the firm. So organizational structures vary according to the span of control and also organizational height. The top management determines the span of control within organization. That is the number of employees that report to a single manager. So when organizational structure is designed in a way so that only few employees report to a single manager, it has narrow span of control. Conversely, when the organizational structure is designed in a way so that each manager supervises numerous employees, it has wide span of control. So the organizational chart at the bottom reflects the wide span of control in which the president directly oversees the work of all of the employees. So such a wide span of control is more typical for firms in which employees are in a similar positions and therefore can be easily monitored by a single manager. So many firms that have wide span of control tend to also have the flat organizational structure because it doesn't require many layers. Conversely, firms that need to use narrow span of control tend to have tall organizational structure with many layers. So let us move on. So the two firms may have the same organizational structure, but middle managers of one firm may be given more authority than those of the other firm. And the distribution of authority is often described whether the firm is centralized or decentralized. So some firms tend to be more centralized, where most authority is held by upper-level managers. So in centralized firms, middle and supervisory managers have less responsibility. They are responsible for day-to-day -day tasks and also reporting to the top managers. However, they are not allowed to make decisions. In recent years, however, many of the firms become decentralized, which means that authority is being spread among several divisions of managers. So there are several advantages of decentralization in the organization. So first of all, it allows to reduce operating expenses because this eliminates the salaries of those employees whose work is no longer needed. Also, it makes the decision-making process faster because lower-level managers have more responsibility. So and finally, employees also may feel more enthusiastic about their work if they have more responsibility. However, delegation may not work well if 
managers do not have sufficient experience or they are unable to complete all the tasks on time. So once the different jobs, assignments, tasks and responsibilities are identified, it is important to departmentalize them. So departmentalization refers to the process of assigning tasks and responsibilities to different departments. So in other words, this is the process of grouping together activities and employees who share a common supervisor and resources, who are jointly responsible for the performance and who also tend to collaborate with each other. So there are four main types of organization structure. Functional, divisional, matrix and team base. So let us consider them one by one. So the functional structure groups activities and people from bottom to the top according to the similarities of their work, profession, goals and so the functional structure groups activities and employees according to the similarity of their work, professional expertise, goals and also resources used. So, in other words, the functions are the necessary activities of the organizations. So, for example, the functions of a manufacturing firm may include production, marketing, human resources, information technologies, and others. So, the necessary functions of a commercial bank may include taking deposits, making the loans, and investing the bank's funds. So, the hospital's functions may include nursing, surgery, housekeeping, and others. So, a university's business school may group its staff according to the subject areas, such as marketing, operations management, finance, human resources and others. So the functional organization structure can be found in relatively small firms with a narrow range of products and services. It also serves as a basis for multi-product large firms. Primary advantage of the functional organization structure is the efficiency which is achieved through the shared expertise and specialization of the staff. So a divisional organization structure splits the organization into entities such as products and services provided, the customer groups served, and also the geographical region operated in. So as the firm grows, it becomes difficult to coordinate various functional units, and therefore it becomes advantageous to establish separate product divisions. So this form of organization structure allows the personnel to develop the total expertise in research, manufacturing, and distributing a particular product line. For example, an automobile company may organize around automotive brands. So Daimler may have divisions including the Mercedes-Benz and Smart, while BMW may have BMW and Mini. So the product-based organization structure may encourage initiative and autonomy by providing the necessary resources to each division to carry their profit plans. However, such organizations may face the problem of redundancy because each of the division may require its own research, manufacturing, marketing and other functions to do the business. And therefore the cost of this arrangement can be substantial. So in geography-based organizational structure, all the activities in a given region are assigned to a manager. In other words, he is in charge of all the operations within this particular geographic area. So in large organizations, geographic arrangement can become advantageous because the physical separation of various activities makes the central coordination difficult. It also has globally distributed production and sales network. Hotels and supermarkets are often also organized in similar way. So the company can be also organized around its main customers and market segments. So for example, some airlines may have the separate reservations division which focuses exclusively on group trips. Also, the university's business school may have clients such as companies and students. The loan department in a commercial bank may provide industrial, commercial and agricultural loan depending on the type of the client it serves. Clearly, such organizations with customer-based departments are better able to satisfy customer identify needs. So the purpose of the matrix organization is to maximize the strength and at the same time minimize weaknesses of both product and functional departmental basis. So in the following chart, 
production marketing, accounting and engineering specialists are assigned to work on three products simultaneously, namely toothpaste, deodorants and sun creams. Importantly, this structure has two lines of authority, which means that each team member reports to two bosses, their product manager and functional manager. So, for example, an employee at the top left corner reports to both toothpaste product manager and also manufacturing manager. Companies such as IBM, Procter & Gamble, Boeing are only the few of the users of matrix organizational structure. So, on the one hand, matrix organizational structure creates flexibility which allows to speed the responses to competitive conditions, technological breakthroughs and other environmental changes. Also, matrix organizational structure requires each team member to have effective communication skills. On the other hand, organizations with the matrix organizational structure type may incur the problem of accountability. So, in particular, no employee may feel responsible because the responsibilities are assigned to teams. Besides, it may not be clear whether the product manager or the function manager is responsible for the profit and loss accounts. So, and the fourth type of organization structure is team-based. And this entirely consists of project teams. So, those teams focus entirely on processes rather than individual tasks. They also closely collaborate and directly work with partners and customers to achieve their goals. So the team-based organization structure can be also described by flattened hierarchy, in which team leaders are responsible for managing the internal processes and coordinating the tasks. So each team member possesses a different expertise which contributes to accomplishment of the task. So and finally, this organization structure is described by delegated decision making by providing more responsibility to junior staff. So for example, a university may have the team-based structure. So for example, some of the academic staff may be members of the multidisciplinary research project. Also, a teaching team may be responsible for delivering lectures and seminars. And finally, an administrative team may be responsible for ensuring that rooms are booked, students' grades are awarded, and legal requirements are complied with. So thank you very much. This is the end of the lecture, and see you soon.